Hey there, this is Mace Haroff for the Medical Sales Channel on YouTube and the Medical Sales Guru Podcast, which you can listen to on iTunes or Spotify or Google Listen or whatever that particular platform is called. We are on all of them. And I've been posting episodes as I have time to do so. I got to tell you, I have been slammed. I have been busier during this coronavirus crisis with various projects than I have been for a long time. Even though I'm not traveling, I'm not delivering live in-person programs for my clients, but still engaged with them and engaged with a lot of people. One of the things that I've been doing over the last two months, and man, the time has flown by, is I've talked to dozens and dozens of medical salespeople, managers, some VPs of sales. And one of the common questions I get is, Mace, what do you think the industry is going to be like moving forward? Is this, is this still a good industry to stay in? That's really the crux of the question that people are asking. Is medical device sales or pharmaceutical sales, biotechnology, whatever the case may be, is it good to stay in this? And I say the answer is absolutely if you know how to stay relevant. Everything moving forward from this point really is about relevancy. Now, certainly if you sell products and services to healthcare, one can argue that your products are relevant because they fulfill a need. But here's what I'm talking about when I mention relevance. I'm not talking about just saying, let's say, say, for example, you sell to dentists and you sell dental drills. Dentists need dental drills, so therefore it is relevant. No, at that simple level, it is not relevant. Here's why. When you call on a dentist, chances are probably 100% that that dentist already has a drill, unless he's brand new, he or she is just setting up a practice. But for anybody who's been doing this for a while, they have a drill and they have an x-ray machine and they have amalgam and whatever other supplies dentists use. So just you offering a drill doesn't make you relevant. What does? Well, what would make you relevant in this situation would be what unmet needs, opportunities, or potential obstacles lie ahead that the dentist might not be thinking about relative to him using a drill. How has coronavirus, for example, impacted the dentist's ability to safely provide care for his patients as well as protecting him or herself and the office staff? You see, you have to look at this in terms of what's happening right now if you want to be relevant. So, in terms of your future in this industry, as long as you can remain relevant, I think you have a great future. Healthcare is not going away. People aren't going to stop going to hospitals. People aren't going to stop getting sick. It would be great if they would, but it's not going to happen. And especially now, um, people have been postponing their healthcare needs. So as we start to emerge from this, and when I say emerge, that's going to be a very long period of time. I know a lot of businesses are opening up right now. People are going back to their favorite restaurants in limited numbers, and I, there are social distancing guidelines and other guidelines such as wearing a mask. Uh, people are starting to do those things, you know, going to the beach, going to the park. But when it comes to healthcare, people are going to postpone, especially older members of our population, seniors, and let's just be honest, people who are at high risk, people who have any of those risk factors for COVID, uh, heart disease, lung disease, obesity, diabetes, or any other comorbidities, these people are going to postpone going to healthcare providers and facilities for as long as they can. Now, as a result of that, what's going to happen? Well, Chances are people are going to get sicker. They're going to need more care. So start looking ahead. How can you help your customers during this peri-COVID period and this post-COVID period that hopefully we will experience at some point in the very near future? So if you could do those things, then you will continue to be relevant. I've heard from some reps 
who've said, well, you know, right now I'm employed by a company, but I'm thinking about starting up my own business, my own distributorship. I'm going off on my own. Is this a good time to do that? And the answer to that question is really the same as to the first question, but with some minor fine tuning. Well, if you want to start a business right now, you have to recognize that this is probably one of the worst times in recent history to sell the same way you sold if you're trying to convert business. Now, when I say the same way you sold, if the way that you sold was with a product focus instead of a problem focus or a patient focused or a healthcare provider focus or a hospital focus, whatever the specificities of your accounts are, if you haven't been selling in a very, very focused way, and you just really have, again, that product or service focus, then you are not going to be perceived as being relevant by those customers. And if you're trying to start a new distributorship right now, that means getting your customers to change what they're doing. And we all know, number one, how healthcare professionals feel about change. But number two, during this period of crisis, they're going to be more resistant to change than ever before. Why? They just want to get through the day. They just want to address the most urgent issues that lie in front of them. And for most healthcare professionals, that's going to be treating patients. So they need to see as many patients as they can. And keep in mind that it's going to take longer for them to treat patients than it did before in almost any specialty. Why? Well, two things. Number one, they have to disinfect the space or facility that they're using between patients. And number two, personal protective equipment, PPE. They're going to have to don and get rid of PPE for each patient that they treat. That takes time. And there's also a cost associated with that. And when you have an associated cost, some of those costs can be passed on to the patient, but some of them cannot be, which means when you have increased costs to try and maintain shrinking margins, profit margins, in any business, then you have to do something like sell more or in the healthcare vernacular, see more patients in the same period of time. So if a healthcare professional is doing that, it means less time for salespeople. And especially for salespeople who do not offer relevant solutions, it means no time. You're just not going to give any time to them. So the world has changed forever. But that doesn't mean that you can't start a successful distributorship or take on a new product line right now if you haven't done that in the past. It just means you're going to have to have a much more strategic approach. And most importantly, you're going to have to be able to distinguish yourself from anything else that is out there. Now, I had one person uh, who called me uh, last week. He said, well, yeah, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been selling XYZ equipment and I know XYZ equipment inside and out. I asked the question, I said, how are you going to distinguish yourself, for example, from your current company? Because your current company is going to become a competitor, right? He said, yeah. I said, so how are you going to distinguish yourself? And he said, well, no problem. We're, we're just going to deliver a better service, um, you know, better salespeople. I said, well, tell me, tell me what that means. What does better service mean? Well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll return calls more quickly. We'll, uh, you know, uh, if they have a problem, uh, we'll be right there on the spot to address it. I said, think about what you're telling me. Do you believe for a second that your competition is not saying the exact same thing? I mean, I, I mean if you say we give, we give the, the best service, you know, our best customer service in the industry, who cares? That's become a cliche. Every company says that. In fact, most companies and medical reps who are bragging about their level of customer service are at best average and more commonly than we'd like to believe, they don't even reach the basic benchmark of acceptability. So if you're truly concerned about delivering a better customer experience such that you can differentiate your product or even better distinguish your product from what the customer is currently using, you really need to make it personal. You need to have a plan. You need to be able to know your customer at a level like never before. If you are able to do this, and by the way, you are, if you're willing to do the work, and 
most medical reps are not willing to do the work, which is good news for you if you are willing to do the work, but most reps aren't willing to do the work. But if you do this and you really reconfigure your sales approach so that when you're talking to a customer, that customer is saying, wow, this salesperson knows me. He or she understands me, my world, my fears, my goals, and the same thing about my patients. When you can do that, you are beyond relevant. You are in a position to gradually and incrementally build your business by taking business from your competition. But if you don't have that level of plan, now might not be a good time to jump ship and just make a lateral move. You, first of all, if you stay with the same company you're with, and for most people that's a good plan, you can't continue to sell the same way you've always sold in a rapidly changing environment and get better sales results. It's not going to happen because your world has changed. And if you're thinking about making a completely new move, you know, changing what you're doing, the same thing applies. So either way, you're going to have to think differently. You're going to have to work differently. You're going to have to perform at a very different level if you want to continue to grow your business. That is a given. And that applies whether, again, you stay where you are or you make a lateral move or you change to a whole different segment of the industry or you bring on a new product line. Think strategically moving forward. And if you do that, you will have amazing opportunities in healthcare sales. Uh, people who think differently in any industry who don't just try to maintain the status quo and support the status quo. These are the people that we are going to hear about becoming multimillionaires and billionaires in the future. I'm not talking about medical reps becoming billionaires, but if you, if you have ideas and are able to bring products to market that solve problems that no one else is solving, yeah, you can become a billionaire. But at the medical rep level, your future success depends entirely on your ability to help your customers to recognize and acknowledge the problems they have and your ability to be able to position problems that address their specific needs, to position products that address their specific needs. I hope you're not positioning problems. They have enough of those on their own. So this is unedited but I hope you get the gist of the message. So that is it for this episode of the Medical Sales Guru Podcast and the Medical Sales Channel on YouTube. I hope you will subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Just hit the subscribe button. And if you are listening to this on iTunes, please like us, uh, give us a review. Uh, those are the things that keep these episodes coming. And if you have a question or a suggestion for a future podcast or video, you can email it to me, mace at medicalsalestraining.com. I will consider it if I feel that it serves the entire group, the entire humanity of medical sales professionals, then I will try to address it on a future video. Hey, listen, what you do is as important as ever. As we move forward, your customers need you, the industry needs you. But to be effective, you're going to have to think differently. So start doing that now. If you have some additional time on your hands, start paying attention to your customers more, what they're doing, what they need, what their problems are, and then find new ways to position your products, redefine your value proposition. Be different than your competition, because I can almost promise you there's a high probability that your competition is going to keep doing what they've always done. If you think differently, if you provide more value, you will move ahead of them. I promise you that. There's no magic. Again, as I said at the beginning, it's simple. Not necessarily easy, but simple. Thanks for taking some of your valuable time to spend it with me. I'll see you on the next episode. Hey, tell your friends about this too, by the way. You've got some medical sales colleagues, Tell them to check me out. I'm also on LinkedIn. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Just do a search on LinkedIn for Mace Haroff and you will find me. H-O-R-O-F-F -F as in Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Hope that makes sense. 
We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.